Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronnie Sweet and a tutorial. And in this tutorial, you're just going to be retouching this image taken by No the Luo. And I'm going to put his Instagram link in the description of this video. And we just want to see how far we can retouch this image using frequency separation. And if I told you a beginner out there, it is going to be a very short and very detailed tutorial so that you can follow along and understand frequency separation from the start to the very end. So I'm just going to link the link to his Instagram in the description of this video so that you can check him out. So you're just going to be learning about frequency separation from the start to the very end in the shortest time possible. And those interested in how I did the color grading for this image, I'm going to link a video right above here so that you can check out how I got these amazing skin tones for this image. So the link is going to be right above here. So just click on that link if at all you're interested in learning about how I did the color grading. So what you have to understand about frequency separation, it usually divides the image into two. That is the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. So you want to create those two layers and I'm going to be explaining that later on in a bit. So just come to the background and hit Ctrl Command J twice to create those two layers. So usually we name this low and we name this high. So after doing this, what we usually tend to do under the low frequency layer or the low layer, we usually have the colors and the skin tones. And in the high layer, we have our textures or the details and the outlines. So I'm going to first of all turn off the high frequency layer and come and select the low frequency layer. So remember, we only want to retain the colors in the low frequency layer. So what we want to do, I'm just going to come right here to filter, blur and come down to Gaussian blur. And... You're just going to come to the radius and simply move the radius. So you have to look for a reference point or the area that has more skin details than the rest of the image. So just look for a reference point of your image. So this is really even skin and the model really has an amazing skin. So I'm just going to use the nose as a reference point and take up my radius up to the point when this 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 details are just starting to disappear or get lost and i'm just going to stop right at that point so at around six we are good to go so you have to stop at that point when you're just starting to lose out on those details in the image so just come and hit okay so when you do this the image is going to turn out to look a little bit blurry and out of focus but this is what we wanted to aim for so i'm just going to come to the high frequency and simply turn it back on and in this high frequency layer, remember, we only want to retain our textures and details. So what we want to do, we're just going to come right here to image. And you come down to apply image. So when you come to apply image, we just want to subtract or extract the details from the low frequency layer and paste them on the high frequency layer. So we're just going to come right here to layer and select the low frequency layer from which we are going to extract the details so if at all you have an 8-bit image the settings are going to differ in this point right here that is what i'm going to be explaining right now so just come to the blending mode if at all you have an 8-bit image so by 8-bit image i mean if at all you have 8 here you have to be using an opacity of 100 percent preserve transparency and mask are not checked the scale is 2 and offset 128 and make sure invert is not checked on so make sure you have your preview option checked on to see the preview or the information or the effect right in this layer so you can see that it has the details so if at all you have a 16-bit image like i have right now just come and use a blending mode of add or pass at 100 percent the scale is 2 and this time around offset is 0 Preserve transparency and mask are not checked and make sure you turn on the invert option. And you can see that it inverts everything and we have the same results and the details are on the gray layer. So just come and hit OK. Come to the blending mode and change it from normal and change it to linear light to get back our image the way it was looking before. So we are done separating the frequencies of the image. So there shouldn't be a difference between the initial image and the divided image so we want to see if at all we still have the real copy of the image after dividing it into these layers i just hope i'm making sense in this tutorial 
So I'm just going to come and select both layers and hit Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard or you can drag and drop them to this folder like icon after selecting them to put them in a group. And I'm going to double click right there and I'm going to name it to Frequency Separation. So after doing this, I'm just going to come and open this Frequency Separation group. And remember when you're doing skin retouching, make sure that you don't leave the Caps Lock key on because every single time you select a tool within Photoshop, it is going to make your tool look like this cross icon that you're seeing. So I have to turn off the Caps Lock key by simply clicking it and you'll get back the tool icon the way it is meant to be. So with skin retouching, especially using frequency separation, we tend to work or even the skin tone so that we can have nice and even skin tone transitions. So what we want to do, we're just going to come to the layer that has skin tone transitions. And like I said, there shouldn't be a difference between the original background image and our frequency separation image. So if at all I close this group and I turn off the background layer, you can see you still have the image. And if at all I do this and I turn off the group, you still have the image. So I'm just going to select the low frequency layer. So I just want to blend or even out the skin tone transition so that I can have a nice and seamless transition within the skin color or the colors within the skin of the model. So in this case, I'm just going to come and get the mixer brush tool and simply Come under the brushes, right click and get your mixer brush tool. And for all the versions of Photoshop, you can just come right here and right click and get your mixer brush tool below here. So since I have Photoshop 2020, I'm just going to come and I start blending the skin tone. So you have to set up the mixer brush tool to do the job right for you. So make sure the hardness is at zero and make sure this option is checked because we want the brush to be clean every single time we are trying to blend different areas of the skin of a model. The weight I'm going to be using 9%, load 75, mix at 90 and the flow at 100%. And make sure sample all layers is not checked or marked because when you check this, it means that when you start painting, it is also going to be copying information from the texture and painting it on this slow layer. Let me show you that. So just, let me just get a brush and simply paint. You can see it is painting texture too in the low frequency, which we don't want. We just want to work with the color. So I'm just going to make sure you turn off this sample earlier so that you can only work with the information in the low frequency, layer, which is the colors. And I'm just going to zoom in slightly. And after zooming in slightly, I'm just going to start painting and evening this skin tone. So the trick I tend to use is I tend to turn off the high frequency layer so that I can see the unevenness within the skin tone transitions and I'm going to simply increase or play around with different sizes of the mixer brush tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and start left click and hold down and simply start painting just like that and you can see it is going to start making the image look plastic and every area is going to look a little bit like an oil painting but this is going to be the major or the catch for this tutorial. So as you're doing this, you're going to notice that the image is going to turn out to look a little bit plastic and not nice at all. But the more you do this, the better the results you're going to be having because every single time you're trying to uh, paint right there, it's going to be making the image look a little bit plastic. And that is going to be the major goal or the emphasis for uh, the results. So when you turn off on the high frequency layer, you can see the result that we have and you can see how beautifully done the transitions have been done or affected. So I'm just going to turn it off and work right on this area. So I'm just trying to paint colors that look alike and blending them to have nice and uniform transitions among the stems. So I'm just going to do this. So just play around with different sizes and just make sure you blend them so that they can really transition quite well and better all over the image. So just going to zoom out slightly and look at uh, the image from a distance. So as you're doing this, make sure that you don't zoom all the way in. And 
retouch it from a distance. I'm just going to do this and paint in just like that. And you can see that this is really doing a pretty nice job. So try to blend the colors that look alike or sim similar within the image. And you have to take your brush strokes depending on how an area is shaped in the photo. So I'm just going to paint in through just like that. Reduce on the size and also paint in this shadow area just like that. So I'm just basically trying to blend the uneven transitions within the skin using the mixer brush tool and I'm just following along the direction of the shape I'm trying to blend or, or mix in the image. So reduce on the size so you have to keep on playing around with various sizes of your mixer brush tool so that you can blend even smaller areas. So I'm just going to come right here and also mix and blend. So like the word says it is a mixer brush tool so it is all about blending and mixing so reduce on the size to work on a smaller area like i said the small or the left bracket or the open bracket reduces on the size and the closed bracket is going to increase on the size so you have to keep on playing around with different sizes of your mixer brush tool as you're trying to blend or even out the transitions i'm just going to paint in through just like that so you have to take your time as you're retouching because you don't want to rush through. Remember this is a beauty portrait and you just want the best out of it. So I'm just going to come and paint in just like that and even those transitions. So when I turn on the texture layer, you can see that we are really having a more even skin tone transition. So don't mind if at all we haven't worked on other areas because with the use of another tool we are just going to be refining or having a better view or better results out of the retouching so i'm just going to come and work on these other areas so remember skin retouching is not only done on the face but on every area that has skin like the name suggests you have to work on each and every area that has skin in the photo so i'm just going to zoom out and i work on the lower parts of the body so I'm basically trying to paint in colors that look alike in every area of the model skin or every area that has skin in the portrait. So I'm just going to come and work on the lower parts of the body and just try to even out the transitions within the skin tones or skin of a model. So I'm just going to paint in through and blend those areas so come and work on these other areas right there and simply blend on the neck area so remember i said i'm going to show you a technique that is going to make your results even better in this very image so you're just going to be using that very technique to refine our retouching and make the results look better from just using the mixer brush tool we're just going to incorporate a second technique that is going to help us get better and finer results out of the frequency separation technique of skin retouching so i'm just going to come and work on every single area that has skin so do that and you're going to be uh, on a, a right track so like i said you shouldn't rush through your skin retouching process so I'm just trying to do this. So just come and turn on the texture layer. And we'll, let's see the before and after for just the use of a mixer brush tool. That's the before, after, before, after. And you can come and just work on these other areas that you haven't really blended well with the texture layer turned on this time around. So just come and also blend this nose highlight that you can have a more better and a beautiful transition within the skin or a skin color rather so we are done using the mixer brush tool so like i said we are going to be incorporating a second a second technique rather that is going to help us better this image so with the low frequency layer selected just come and get the lasso tool 
and how the lasso tool works. When you make a selection, make sure if at all your feather is at 0% and you make a selection, for example, on the skin area, and you hit Q on the keyboard, you can see that the edges of the selection are really harsh. And when you apply that frequency separation or gush and blight is going to be leaving that area to be very rough and sharp and it's going to be looking weird. So always make sure just hit Q to deactivate the mask. So always make sure that you put the feather at around 22 pixels so that it can really provide a more smooth selection. So you can see this looks smoother than before. So I'm just going to turn this off. And this time around, come and make a selection onto the skin of a model just like that. Just come and make a selection on the skin. So you have to keep away from the eyebrows and the edges of your face. So just come to filter and come to blur and come down to gush and blur. So a trick I tend to use when, when I reach this step, I usually multiply this radius by 3. And I usually have the best outer skin textures and it is very natural and real realistic so or alternatively you can just drag this up to point when you get the best out of your skin so you have to move this up to when you feel like you're having the best skin texture out of the photo so for this case i'm just going to use my technique that is multiplying that radius that we're using when you're dividing the frequencies of the image by three so 6 by 3 is 18. So I'm just going to delete 6 and type in 18. And you can see the skin detail or texture is very natural. Simply hit OK. And I'm just going to be applying this onto the rest or the overall image. So you can see the shapes I'm making are following the shape of a face. So right click and come to Gaussian Blur. And when you feel like the effect is too much, you can simply right click on the selection. For example, after applying it, Right click on the selection and come to fade gush and blur and reduce on the opacity of the effect. So, and as you're doing this, make sure that the first option in the gush and blur is selected so that you can keep on deselecting by just clicking out from the selection to deselect or come and make another selection or a new selection. So, I'm just going to come and paint or draw a selection. Right click and come to gush and blur and come and apply it right on this other side. You can see while I'm making my shapes, I'm basically following the shape of a model's face so that I don't distort the original shape or changing the original shape of a model's face. So that is what I'm trying to do when I'm applying this technique for the Gaussian blast. So if I don't, you're not careful with this, you can oftentimes misuse it and you end up having an image that doesn't look nice and very realistic so i'm just going to come right here and apply it so basically this step is more of a refining or fine-tuning step for the areas that we may have missed out when we are trying to apply our mixer brush tool for skin retouching so you can see right now this is what we have right now so let's see the before and after for the retouching. This is the before, after, before, after. Can see that we have still retained the original details within the skin. So anything that you want to do as a retoucher is removing the blemishes. So I tend to come and select the layer that contains the details or the textures and come and get the clone stamp tool. And for a hardness, I leave it at 40%. Or pass on the flat 100%. Make sure sample is on the current layer because we don't want to sample information from other layers so by zooming in by using ctrl command plus you can zoom into your image reduce on the size so the size of the clone sample tool has to be slightly bigger than the blemish you want to eliminate so how i remove the blemishes i sample by holding down alternate to sample a clean area alternate left click to copy a clean area near the blemish and simply left click over the blemish after releasing the alternate to clean or get rid of the blemish from a specific area of the photo. So I'm just going to clean up these tiny uh, imperfections and have the best out of the image. And like I said at the start of the tutorial, the makeup artist and the model really 
contributed so much to the overall nice look of this image because we have less work to do as regarding blemish removal and cleaning up so you can see it is really taking less time and always make sure to have the right model and the right skin and the right makeup artist to fasten or make your work very easy as a retoucher or photographer because you may spend so so much time trying to correct imperfections yet those could just be fixed by the makeup artist before you do the shoot so i'm just going to come and clean up these tiny imperfections for example in the neck area and try to eliminate this line so I'm just going to do this and eliminate these areas just like that you can see right now the image looks very nice and beautiful so what i'm going to do i'm just going to try and get rid of this tiny blemish right on the forehead so you have to take your time while cleaning up or removing skin imperfections or blemishes from your images so right now you can see how nice and beautiful the image has turned out to be or to look in this case so just going to close this group you can see before and after our frequency separation you can come and do a little bit of eye whitening by simply coming and creating a hue and saturation adjustment layer and simply taking down the saturation of the image all the way down and taking up the lightness slightly to brighten up the eyes and i'm just going to hit ctrl command i on the keyboard and invert that and get a brush so with the brush of past 100 percent and flow 100 percent with white on top and to get black and white click on these two small boxes and to switch between black and white use x on the keyboard and using a white brush i'm just going to zoom in and do a little bit of eye and teeth whitening so i'm just going to paint using a white brush to whiten the eyes of the model just like that you have to be careful and when you paint on an area that you don't want to be affected or to affect the image you can come and switch the brush back to black and paint away the areas you don't want to be affected so i'm just going to come switch back the brush to white and whiten the eyes so just come and paint through the eyes and you can see it is really doing a nice and decent job you can as well enhance the catch light reduce on the size to work on a smaller area and for your mistakes just switch the brush back to black and eliminate what you just painted all the extras so you can see is really doing a nice and way decent job so you can come and do a little bit of the teeth whitening if at all you want to do so i'm zooming in by using ctrl command plus on the keyboard so make sure white is on top for the effect to uh, be effective and just come and paint in the teeth just like that to whiten the teeth command minus to zoom out you can see the before and after for the eye whitening and the photo is really popping so the next thing that you want to do is saving the image after retouching so in order to save it just come to file export and come to export as so just want the image not to change color after being edited or retouched so you're just going to come right here and with this export as window selected so you're going to be having the image in this preview make sure format is jpeg quality at 100 percent image size i'm going to leave it at the way it is and the scale at 100 percent resample if i told you want the image to be slightly sharpened make sure you select by cubic sharper and leave the canvas size the way it is you can now embed the color profile and also convert it to srgb so that it doesn't change in color after i've been able to save or retouch it in photoshop and simply hit export so basically this is how to retouch your images using frequency separation and if at all you have found this helpful don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed this channel ronis from ronis photography thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating